Hi, and welcome to episode 4 of Project Immersion TV. Today I'm going to be talking about the long awaited Next Level Motion V2 platform, finally released in the middle of February 2016 after a nigh on six month wait, I guess, on pre order. In this episode, I'm going to take the unit through its paces and show you how tunable it is by the options in the software and the sim profiles that come with it. And on top of that, I'll be showing you what it looks like when racing from the using the subtlest of profiles to something quite violent so that you can see and hear what it sounds like too. The compact unit, shown here in red, is designed to fit under your racing seat and is direct bolt onto current and previous GT Ultimate seats from next level as you'd expect. Of course you could fit this on your current rig as there are plenty of mounting holes that you can use to adapt for seats from other manufacturers. It's a cinch to install and I've fit a couple of them now and uh, I can tell you it takes less than 30 minutes to get you up and running. The unit weighs around 21 kilograms on its own so it's a bit of a handful but it's literally 10 bolts, 4 to the seat rails and 3 each side to firmly fix it to the included lowered side panels that have a rather nice laser cutout for the name. There's also an optional book kicker mounting post that you can bolt onto the rear for added tactile feedback should you desire which is another 4 nuts and bolts. The unit takes two cables at the front one for the integrated power supply, direct from the mains, which is an IEC type that comes with an EU plug, so if you're in the UK you'll need to change that. The power drawer is very low, it's less than a quarter of a kilowatt, and a USB 2 type B socket is also at the front on the other side that I've connected to a backwards compatible USB 3 from my motherboard, which, and it works adequately and works very well. The requirement is for USB 2. The USB lead that is supplied is quite low quality, I'm not too sure whether it is because it's into a USB 3 socket on my motherboard but it seemed to pick up a lot of interference and I found a lot of disconnects were being logged. So I mean there are a lot of other electronic devices that I have in, the, in my man cave as it were so I ended up replacing it with a dual shielded ferrite bonded USB 2 cable and this has all but eradicated the disconnects. I had to do the same for my previous motion solution the Gecko GS105 so it came as no surprise really. There are two motor driven arms at the front that facilitate the movement across two degrees of freedom, or two DOF, and they move around or about the universal joint situated on the top in the middle of the unit supporting the cradle, which bolts onto your seat or seat rails if you have them. The unit moves 10 degrees from the centre point, forwards, backwards, left and right at a maximum speed of 20 degrees per second, which may sound quite slow but going from one extremity to the other on an axis at this speed is very violent and something I personally don't really want to experience whilst racing as it would probably mean I was headlong at speed into a wall. I have a very quiet man cave and even the PC is water cooled in a different room. Well, the garage actually downstairs and having had the gecko previously which was almost silent in use and air cooled, I was surprised that the fans touted as silent in the marketing book by next level are actually the noisiest sound in the room when at rest. It's about 50% louder than the fan on the CSW V2 when it kicks in to cool the wheelbase, but it really is not noticeable when racing with the volume up to a normal level on a 5.1 system, or if you've got your headphones on you can't hear it at all. In fact, there are six fans in the Motion V2, five of which are on continuously, one to cool the electronics and one each for the two motors and the associated electromagnetic brakes, which lock on with a clunk when you are paused to keep the chair from moving around. A great addition, mind. The sixth fan is within the integrated power supply and only seems to come on when the unit gets warm. The motors themselves, when moving, the arms which manoeuvre the seat are much louder than the fans, but not as loud as I was expecting. They come in at about 80% of the volume of a D-Box setup, and from the videos I've watched of actuator-based motion rigs, both manufacturer and DIY, the motors on the V2 seem to be much quieter than those alternatives on the whole. As many of you know, I'm a handyman and not adverse to DIY at all, but I'm struggling for space and could not accommodate any long actuator struts behind the seat, so I really needed something that did not extend beyond the footprint of the seat, and the next level Motion V2 does not disappoint in this regard. Even with the book Gamma 2 attached to the post at the rear, it's still within the seat footprint. The software does transmit the tactile feedback from the racing sim to the chair itself, but I find having the book kicker in addition running fr from SimVibe greatly enhances the inbuilt feedback on the chair. It's just something I've gotten used to and it's a lot crisper than can be achieved by the 4 seat PM software that the Motion V2 operates from. For instance the combined tactile feedback when braking with ABS or going over a rumble strip on a kerb is superb as you get the simulated motion and the crispness of the shock 
for the seat of your pants or the clunk for a gear change alongside the surge in motion as well you can feel forwards or backwards. So let's have a look at the software for CPM or Platform Manager. It's created and maintained by Motion Systems EU in Poland along with the actual manufacturer of the units themselves for next level racing. A professional motion systems company with a wide reputation outside of the home arena. It's packaged with plugins and profiles for most of the current titles and also the capability for cloning and creating them yourself which you're encouraged to do so within the comprehensive user manual so that you can save any changes you make to the standard profiles as they are read only. The plugins sometimes require installation and the software either does this for you or guides you through it in an easy to follow fashion. No need for a degree in computer science here. There are plenty of useful tools accessible directly from within the user interface such as the Action Center which will highlight any issues, configuration needs or software and firmware updates that need to be applied. As you can see here there's no pending issues and everything seems to be configured right. You can of course check the configuration of games if you don't believe that. Once you've created your own profiles, you can start tuning them to your own needs. Most of them will require some tuning, even if it's just one or two of the settings. And this can be achieved by using the Quick Tunes menu to alter any of the six or so sliders, or by going in depth and altering the figures directly to a more verbose level by clicking Edit, and another window pops up. It's here you can also limit the maximum speed of travel, if you so wish, along with how fast or not the start and stop ramps behave. You can export and share your custom profiles to be imported. And, who knows, over time, Next Level may provide some sort of repository for the sharing of these, or even just a community forum, a facility that is lacking currently on their site. But it's early days for this platform, so watch this space, I guess. Maybe not this space, but next level space. Despite the two degrees of freedom of the unit appearing to be those of roll and pitch, the other degrees of freedom are emulated by the software, giving a much more rounded approach to the immersion. The overall intensity seems to control the extent of the movements across the two axes, whilst each of the effect intensity sliders control the individual contribution of that effect to the motion. By default, the sliders are set to 1.0. This, I suspect, is somebody's interpretation of the output from the sim by the scripts within 4CPM at 1 to 1 to be emulated to produce the g-force effect you would feel if you were driving a real car. Of course, it's up to you to interpret that, and you can go all the way down to 0.2 and all the way up to 2.5 on each of these sliders. The variation is incredibly vast and you can tune it to your own taste once you get a grip on it. The park on pause option engages the two electromagnetic brakes whilst you are stationary to keep the seat perfectly still until you move the vertical vehicle. They're a fantastic addition and really do hold the motion platform rock solid. When the unit is powered off however, there are slight movements to, to be felt. You can move slightly left and right and the more you do that, the more it moves. It doesn't move like greatly, it's only minor, so it's not a big issue. But the unit calibrates at power on each time to find its center point, so it's not a big issue at all. There have been three updates in the last month to the original release of Fort Seat PM that we were issued when this platform came out, which shows that it's a continuous development, and the fact that it's not not only just the next level motion v2 that it controls means that it should receive regular updates for a long time to come with new releases of racing flying and home entertainment sims coming out i've created a profile for automobilista using the stock car extreme plugin and added my own graphic as you could see and it works just fine and i think there are profiles for anything else i own from a racing perspective already in there so I'm well covered. OK, so let's take this for a spin. I've cloned the default R Factor 2 profile in the software and I've left it mainly default. I've changed only heave and surge intensity, just dropped them down a bit to get them more in line with the other effects, the feel I get from the effects. Um, I've left it at default maximum speed 
um, so it can go up to the maximum speed but despite this uh, the what you're going to see is, is quite subtle movements and um, that's probably down to the fact I'm using Malaysia loop B uh, or the south loop should I say um, and also uh, the car I'm using is quite a solid car uh, the, I'm using one of the Enduro Racers modding team's flat 6 series. Thanks guys for the mod by the way. So, without further ado, let's see it in action. Just one thing to note, I've left the volume of the 5.1 uh, surround system uh, at the normal volume I would use whilst racing. Uh, so you can see the volume of the uh, motion platform in comparison.
Dirt 2, I thought I'd turn the 5.1 system down so you can actually hear the noise the uh, motion uh, platform makes uh, on its, well not so much on its own but with lowered volume. In summary, the next level motion V2 is compact and relatively quiet. It's not totally silent though. It's all contained within one unit. No external power supplies or control boxes are required, so cabling is minimal and easily tidied out of the way. Side panels are included that are tailored for adding the unit to the next level GT Ultimate range of seats, but there are no rubber grips on the bottom, so make sure you have it attached to the wheel stand to prevent slipping. It's half an hour installation time to add it to a next level rig. You need muscles though, as it weighs to turn. Well, 21 kilograms, so reinsuringly heavy, but this shows how solid it is. Your whole body is moved to simulate the g forces that would be applied to you if you were in a real vehicle, but the wheel, pedals, and screen cannot be moved with this solution. Adaptation for your brain is instant. As soon as you start, your brain gets it. Tactile feedback is already included in part of the solution through the two motors and two degrees of freedom, and you can easily add a book clicker to the platform on the included post. It takes a while to understand what is what with the profiling software and which effects control which movements. It's not always the obvious one. Speed, intensity of effects and extensive motion are fully customizable once you've grasped it. Some of the early firmware updates have needed the custom profiles to be started from scratch, which takes away the racing time. That said, things are now getting to the point where they are pretty good out of the box. The only minor changes are needed to suit the person, vehicle and track for each title. 4 seat PM is a simple software interface with half a dozen sliders that you can use for ease of adjustments once you grasp what each effect is and how it is interpreted by the platform. It could be argued that a DIY system is less than half the cost, which is great if you have a lot of engineering experience, can provide your own hardware support, and want to use open source software the community itself supports, and have a lot of time to invest. The next level V2 comes with two years warranty in the EU, email based support, professional level software and it can be up and running in the time it would take to have a single GT3 race around Brand Hatch Indy.
thumbs up to Next Level Racing for developing this platform with Motion Systems EU to produce probably what is the most compact motion systems platform available on the market today. So that's all from me. I'd like to thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it useful, and we'll see you next time.